Hello everyone and welcome to today's webinar. On behalf of American Petroleum Professionals of Iranian Heritage, APPIH, it's our great honor to start another webinar on the subject of a leadership approach to the management by Dr. Behrouz Fattahi. Dr. Fattahi holds PhD degrees in aerospace engineering and mechanical engineering from the Iowa State University. After seven, uh, 37 years of working in the industry, he retired in 2014. He has significant experience in teaching technical courses, including topics of reservoir engineering and enhanced oil recovery. He served as, a, as the editor of SP Reservoir Evaluation and Engineering Journal. Also, he holds several top positions in Society of Petroleum Engineering, Engineering SPE. He is now president of the Enertrain Institute, providing petroleum heavy oil training and consulting, as well as lectures and workshops. I would thank Dr. Patai for accepting our invitation, and without further delay, I'm transferring microphone to him for starting his presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Hamid, uh, and um, for the nice welcome. Um, and uh, thank you to all of those who are participating today to uh, hear what I have to say. Um, let me see if I can now move on to my slide. So uh, this is uh, not moving, Mr. Hamid. Oh, there we go. Okay. So uh, today I want to talk to you about uh, a leadership approach to management. And the reason I got interested in this topic was that I read a few articles and um, I found out that the state of management in this country and also around the world is, uh, is um, uh, a disaster. And uh, now, I might be exaggerating it, but I'll show you some evidence of it. And by the way, those of you who are in the audience or who will later uh, listen to this presentation, um, I don't intend to insult those of you who are managers. Uh, this is just the, um, you know, I do not the stereotype. And um, a lot of you are good managers, I'm sure. but the evidence uh, from around the world shows that we need to pay a lot of attention to the way we manage projects. So um, um, this uh, presentation is designed for managers that are managers today or aim to become managers, those of you who aim to become managers, and also current managers who wish to become future effective leaders. And I uh, will uh, talk about that a lot more. Um, there is a lack of proper leadership practices today and widespread management ineffectiveness. I wanna talk about perception of management and leadership and how I think the ability to manage is augmented uh, through leadership. And then I present a new model uh, to offer a leadership approach to management. Um, so what seems to be the problem? Uh, the first and the most important is lack of engagement by the people in companies, organizations, wherever they are. 82% of the time, companies fail to choose the candidate with right talent. And that cost, of course, uh, a lot of dollars, uh, billions of dollars, in fact, uh, each year. And only one in 10 managers selected possess the talent uh, to manage. So you might have uh, noticed uh, some of the poor manager, management uh, exercise by um, some of your managers or previous managers in uh, at workplace, but um, this is uh, bad. One out of 10 selected possess the talent to be managers. And uh, a recent study by Gallup uh, organization, which is a consulting organization, by the way, is a study of performance of hundreds of organizations around the world. 
um, uh, involving 27 million people over a 20 years period. So that's a, that's a very comprehensive study. It shows that in the United States, one, only one third of the employees are engaged. In other words, two thirds are not engaged. And if you think that's bad, around the world, as an average, uh, the uh, lack of a engagement is 87%. Only 13% of the employees around the world are engaged. If you look at this chart that I'm presenting here, the light bar uh, shows the people who are engaged. And the first one to uh, the left of your screen is the United States which has the best score actually uh, for those engaged, and that's 33%. Um, look at the second bar, the gray bar. Those are the people who are not engaged. And then the dark bar are the people who are actively disengaged. In other words, they mm, even may sabotage uh, the project in order not to be engaged or work. And if you go to the very right of the, uh, uh, chart. Then I have East Asia, which only has uh, about 7% of the employees engaged. So this to me is a disaster. And this is a recent study, by the way. So what seems to be the second problem? Uh, poor results, uh, naturally, because of the uh, lack of engagement, then the results of the projects are not uh, very uh, desirable. Uh, only 7% of the CEOs believe their companies uh, train or create leaders for the future, only 7%. And only 10% believe that leadership development initiatives have a clear business impact. 90% don't think what they are engaged in, in terms of training, leadership development and leadership training is not working for them. A McKinsey study also shows that only 11% of the 500 executives that, that were talked with uh, believe that leadership development intervention, intervention achieves anything. So management also don't think that the companies or organizations are doing a good job. Poor executions, of course, uh, executions, of course, another uh, component of the failure here. 50% of the managers said they did not receive any management training. That's six, almost 60% of the management in the companies around the world. Not, and this is not, by the way, not only companies, many different organizations and many different industries. This, does, uh, this goes beyond the oil industry. And 89% uh, of managers believe employees quit because they are going after money that they're offered someplace else. While his studies, very substantial studies show that only 12% of the employees leave for more money. Almost 90% leave because their bosses are not doing a good job. Another component is unhappy employees, naturally with poor managers, poor execution, poor results. 50% of the people say they trust strangers out in the street more than their own managers. And 79% of the people who quit the jobs cite lack of appreciation by their management as a reason for leaving. And then 53% of American workers are unhappy at work. So there is a lot of unhappiness that goes in America or around the world. The Harvard Business Review study shows another important component that says work here is a skilled incompetence. That is where incompetent people think they know everything and they try to implement what they know or what their gut feeling is. A lot of managers, they uh, go and even take a training uh, for leadership and management, and then come back to work and say, well, I, I uh, know that I know better and everything that I have been doing, I wanna do the same thing. And therefore, very skillfully 
practice their incompetence. So this is, uh, these are the evidence for uh, a failure on the management side. So let's understand first, what is management and how is leadership defined? What it, what's the difference? Why I believe soft competencies play a role, an important role in achieving a successful transition from a manager to a leader. And uh, then I have a model to propose for transforming managers to leader managers, who, who they, I, I call leader managers. Um, we all have been in discussions and uh, around in our organization have heard terms manager, leader, lead, head, chief, director, supervisor, and all of these are interchangeably used in an organization. These are positions, these are titles. And if you go from another, one company to another company, you may hold the same level of uh, job uh, or duty, but your title may change from one company to another. So these are only titles and refer these titles refer to those people who call themselves managers and are in charge of people and processes. Their uh, responsibilities, of course, are coordinate efforts of teams, uh, make sure they accomplish their goals and objectives, sometimes at any cost. Managing utilization of financial and technical and human resources. They monitor key performance indicators, KPIs, and make sure that we meet the milestones. And of course, they are accountable to hire managers and board members. The terms management and leadership are also used interchangeably. However, when somebody is talking about a manager or a leader, we have to make sure that we understand who they're talking about. Are they talking about a group of people or attributes of people? You know, for example, we say the leadership in the Senate of the United States. So are they managers or leaders? And if they're called leaders, do they really have the attributes of a leader? So sometimes leadership is called to a group of people or leader is called, uh, you know, is uh, the title of a person who uh, runs a place. But that does not necessarily mean that that one person or that group of people know anything about leadership. When it comes to attributes, that's when leaders are, um, are um, identified. So while managers are in control, leaders, leadership is all about influence. Um, this is an interesting um, uh, example that uh, uh, I read in Harvard Business Review. It's a study by Buckingham um, and he identified managers uh, uh, in two different groups. Uh, one, he said, Average managers play checkers, while great managers play chess. And I hope uh, you know what a checkers game is played like and chess is played like. So average managers play checkers, great managers play chess. And so how that? How's that? In checkers, all the pieces look the same and move the same way. So an average manager is in a department they look at uh, all the people as the same, not in depth, not they don't look at their talents, their needs and their attributes. They just look at as an employee who is here to do the work. And um, um, the movements are already designed and dictated by the manager, just like in checkers, maybe one or two different moves. In chess, however, each piece looks different and moves different. And so a great manager who is looking at his employees or subordinates looks at these people differently, 
to recognize what kind of person he's got, who is the best for a certain task, and uh, uh, employ that person at that task. So when uh, the, um, the um, soft competencies and or the leadership was implemented in companies, I have about three examples here, when key actions dramatically, uh, the key actions implemented, they dramatically improve the success rate. If you look at this chart on the vertical uh, axis, I have success, success rate of leadership. And on the, um, on the um, uh, horizontal axis, I have the number of key actions taken. So the more of leadership activities took place in a company, and this is about 510 different executives in many different companies, uh, studied by McKinsey. It shows that the more of the leadership activities were implemented or uh, was expected by the top management, the more productivity went up and success of the uh, uh, programs uh, showed themselves up. The, um, another example is by uh, Zenge, who uh, studied uh, back in uh, 2016, the impact of starting leadership development as early as possible. As you go to work, for example, you know, not necessarily the next day, but very soon in your career, if they put you in leadership uh, programs, that shows that, that that has shown that productivity of that employee goes up. I want to get one uh, simple example. Uh, before I became a, my, uh, got my first management job, I asked my uh, boss to uh, send me to a management uh, um, training. And he said, well, you're not the manager yet, the manager yet, so you don't need to go. So that was a strange uh, at that time. And that, that made me think that should the management uh, training take place even when you're not the manager? And um, the results show that yes, we have to start as soon as possible. And there is a chart uh, survey of about 500 executives around the world shows that um, with increasing leadership, uh, then increasing productivity is observed in a, in a company. So uh, there's a lot of SCADIC, but I have drawn the best line to the SCADIC. And of course, you know, a lot of these uh, are of course, are uh, impacted by cultures, languages, and, uh, and um, the um, experience of the employees who are looked at. So Giles, uh, in a study back in 2016, said, what are the most important leadership competencies? And so he talked to 195 leaders in 15 different countries, and they identified what you see on the right-hand side in that bar chart, and I have truncated that chart quite a bit. There's quite a bit more, but the high ethical and moral standards, standards is at the very top. And then providing goals and objectives, clearly communicate expectations, and down the line, provide safety for trial and error. So there are some management uh, tasks there. And there are some leadership, uh, you know, the first one, for example, observing high ethical standards is a leadership uh, attribute. Um, some time ago, actually back in 2018, uh, Deloitte, uh, which is another consulting company, um, came up with a model that, uh, um, that shows how you may transform a manager to a strong leader. And they uh, provided um, um, eight different components to move a manager to a strong leader, starting with making business decisions that drive positive bottom line performance. 
and any good manager should do that. So that's a management uh, scale. And then the other life arrow shows know their markets and innovate uh, to stay ahead. These are good management at attributes. But then they also have the other six arrows, which are darker, colored darker here, inspire others to take action. That's a leadership approach. Get teams to achieve results, set vision, collaborate, develop people for com a competitive advantage, and then persuade and influence in all directions. These are leadership attributes. These are what Deloitte taught managers should practice in order to um, become strong leaders. So when I looked at all this and then what I have shown and talked about so far, I uh, ended up with my own model, which really emphasizes uh, practice. First, of course, is training, but then if you don't practice, then the training it has been a waste of time. And uh, what inspired me also is a statement, is a sentence by Albert Einstein. It says, in theory, theory and practice are the same. In practice, they're not. So when you practice something, it's quite different from what you read in the book or heard in a classroom. And so it's very important to implement uh, what you learned and learn it and get experience more with the practice part of it. And I have a, a couple dancers on the right hand, uh, sketch of dancers. And the reason I have that is uh, because, for example, all of us know that um, tango or waltz, they are only a few steps. You can go to any dance class and learn them maybe in half hour how to take these simple steps. They're really simple. But then after that half hour, are you or do you feel confident enough to come out and go to uh, maybe Carnegie Hall in New York and dance for an audience who have paid hundreds of dollars per ticket to watch you? So you can learn, become aware of something, but it takes years for a dancer to become a skillful dancer that the audience will pay for and enjoy the moments or the movements. So my model um, is a path to excellence. And that path to excellence has an engine in the middle. From a manager to a leader manager, I say, okay, I agree. The first step is uh, awareness, aware of soft competencies, learning people competency. Those are important. But then it's an ongoing process. You learn it, you become aware of it, and then you go and practice it. And you practice it in order to become more experienced and become a soft, capable manager, or eventually a leader. And you come back and this engine just keeps going and going and until the, uh, your retirement, you still learn more and more of leadership attributes. What are these leadership attributes? Or uh, I have a few of them here, um, like goal setting, influencing, system thinking, diversity and inclusion, which to me is very important, being positive, teamwork, and leading by example. These are all leadership attributes that you can practice. But first, you have to, of course, learn how to implement these things. But when you come back to work, you can practice them. You can practice these things at home as well. When you're at home, you might be managing your household um, with your team members as your spouses or, uh, their, uh, or your kids. So you have a team at home as well. So all of these are applicable when you go home. It's not only in the office. The learning part is very important. Let's go from the bottom of this uh, arrow that I have on the left-hand side. And it says individual. The individual uh, is where you go to work, when you start, when you're young, you go to work and the first, for the first couple of years, you uh, learn how to be creative, innovative. You discover yourself. 
you uh, ask yourself, who am I? And how I can get better in this environment that I just got employed in. And uh, you start uh, uh, using your imaginations, being ethical, uh, being persistent, you're learning things, and being patient. Sometimes things are difficult, but it takes practice and patience. Then you elevate yourself after a couple of years to uh, learning interpersonal skills. And uh, those are because now you come in touch with the rest of your team members, whether it's a geologist or a facilities engineer or production engineer or reservoir engineer in our uh, industry. You start learning how to deal with people, how to pay respect and become respected. And these are very important. Uh, you learn about conflict resolution. You don't always agree, but you don't have to be disrespectful. Uh, you, uh, at work, you see diversity. People from different parts of the world. People of different uh, color of skin. People of different religion. Uh, people with different um, accents. And you have to deal with all that. You cannot dismiss one or part of these uh, 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 these attributes. Then once your learning is more complete and you are more experienced, then you move to organizational uh, skills. That's uh, when you start managing a team or become a manager of a group, or leader of a group. And then integration at the end when you uh, really grow up in experience and at the end, you might run a big company with a lot of people. So you employ everything that you have learned from the very beginning. Now, why, why is that important? Why is that uh, uh, interaction with other people important? If you look at the, our brain, um, you know, a, a sketch of a brain here, um, there are two important parts, other than many other important parts in uh, the brain. There are two important parts in the brain structure. One is called the limbic system. That's at the lower end. And um, the limbic system is uh, houses emotional uh, life, including long-term memory and, and formation of memories. Your behavior is controlled by uh, your uh, limbic system. Then another system, which is in forefront of your uh, brain, is called the rational brain or a logical brain. And that is what we pay attention to most of the time when we go to school. In fact, when, uh, you know, when we, are, um, we, we, we have not gotten to, age to, to the, an age to go to school, you know, our parents teach a lot of uh, emotional things, you know. For example, they say, you know, our parents, uh, and I still remember, share, be polite, say hi, uh, don't beat other people, um, and uh, pay respect to elderly, uh, more importantly. Um, the logical part becomes more trained when we go to school and all the way into college. Uh, we learn logic. We learn a lot of math and mechanics. And uh, for a logical brain, one plus one is always two because it's a logical brain, it's a rational brain. But for an emotional brain, one plus one is not two every day. Some, day, some days it's two, some day, days it might be three or uh, four, depending on who is um, uh, out there and what and how your interaction with other people um uh, is taking place so when we uh feel something or see something or hear something these are all the signals that come from different organs in our body to first the emotional uh brain or the limbic system the limbic system is the place that receives the first signal and so it's natural that our first reaction is an emotional reaction. It might be fear, it might be laughter, it might be jumping, or you know, depending on the signal that we have received. Limbic system analyzes that, forms a reaction, but before sending it out to the other parts of the brain to command your body to uh, do what it needs to do, it sends it to the logical, rational brain. 
and the rational brain filters that includes uh, some logic into your reaction and sends it back to emotional. And this iteration takes place in tenth of a second or less uh, to form a decision or a behavior that is um, a combination of the logic of the logic and emotion. Now, in some people, it may be more logic. In some people, maybe more emotion. But it is a combination. And so, and that's what you display to others every day. You have, you show some emotion and logic put together. So when you go to work and you're working with a, you know, on a project with your coworkers, it's not all logic and it's not all emotions. It's a combination of that. And either one can uh, make you successful or get you in trouble, in fact. So when we uh, implement uh, or learn and then implement or practice these leaderships, leadership attributes, then we go from doing things right to doing the right things. And that's very important. That doing things right means that you're a manager, you're given a project and you're gonna do it to the uh, very point of doing the pieces and everything and get it done. Doesn't matter if it's a good project or not, you're gonna do it and you're gonna do a good job. Naturally, that's a sign of a good manager. But if you combine leadership with it, you're doing the right things. You only work on the projects that are right. Instead of position of authority that you exert uh, or force people or kind of make people fear of you, uh, you motivate and inspire people. You create enthusiasm uh, you know, in, uh, within your employees or your team. <coughs> Excuse me. Instead of commanding, pushing, and expecting, you will be encouraging, pulling, seeking commitment. Asking people to follow, you know, follow me, I know everything. You don't need to uh, really spend a lot of time learning yourself. Instead, you encourage initiatives. After all, you're there as a leader, as a manager leader, to, or a leader manager, to create future leaders. Uh, encouraging order and discipline is the job of a manager. Obviously, when you become a manager leader or leader manager, you encourage change and movement. Uh, instead of driving, you coach. Instead of rewarding, you develop people. And uh, rewarding is reprimanding. Reprimanding, uh, you uh, develop people. Let them make mistakes and then you teach them how not to make a mistake next time. And then instead of being reactive and strategizing for short term, you look at more as a proactive person. You create a proactive team and develop vision for long term because like I said, you're trying to create and train other leaders. So in an organization, then it's best to, uh, you know, work in the right, upper right hand quadrant of the leadership and management. And that's where a strong leadership and a strong management is implemented. If you are at the lower left, then uh, weak leadership and weak management. It's chaotic. All the processes are chaotic because there's no management and there's no leadership, no vision, little to no productivity. And that's what I think, you know, uh, the reason uh, or mostly the reason for 87% uh, or people in the world in the, employ in the um, uh, employment around the world are not really engaged. If you go up and above in the um, uh, higher management and lower leadership, then you have a well-planned process, obviously a strong management, that's what it dictates. But the processes are top-down driven approach. And that means you get uh, um, the order from your boss or your from your manager and you start marching. And everything is short-term, short-term vision. If you are on the lower right-hand side, strong leadership and weak management, that's not good either. Weak management creates chaotic uh, environment ineffective bottom up and uh, because 
milestones are not met and goals are not met. So we need a combination of management and leadership. The only place to be at is the upper right hand, strong leadership and strong management. That's when you have well-planned, stable processes, uh, bottom-up initiative, because you're allowed as an employee to show what you think and uh, have an effective participation in the process, own the process, short and long-term vision both exist within that organization, very highly productive uh, team, and everybody owns part of that process. So when you get to the end, then what is uh, produced and the product is owned by everyone. Everyone is accountable and responsible for it. So uh, my concluding thoughts for uh, what I just talked about in the past 30 minutes is while managers plan, organize, and measure value, leaders on the other hand, take the additional steps of inspiring, motivating, enabling, and adding value. Now, make sure these things exist in your uh, workplace or within uh, your home. So these are the sign of leadership, a combined management skills and uh, uh, leadership attributes. The key to success for an organization is to transform its managers to leader managers. That way, they send them, uh, send everyone to soft competency learning. It's important to create that awareness. Don't even for one minute feel that I know everything about soft competencies, so I'm ready to practice it. No, soft competencies are not easy. Go and learn them. And then follow them the next day by implementing uh, soft uh, competencies. So you become soft capable. Start with an individual in an organization causes that the organization also becomes um, um, more uh, productive and uh, therefore <clears throat> avoid potentially lethal outcomes, which uh, we've seen many companies go down um, and um, sometimes they don't know why. So with that, I'm done actually speaking, and um, I'll be happy to answer any questions that you might have. Thank you so much, Dr. Patai. I sent the question that I received so far in your uh, private chat. Please check it. And other audience, they can ask the question in the chat box, please. Dr. Fatai, good evening. This is Ali Donashi. Very good presentation. Hi, Ali. Good to hear from you. Well, it's good to see you. You, you, you look as young as ever. <laughs> I appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, what is the who are the key players in implementing this process? Is this something that you start from the top of the organization and make sure that it is uh, practiced as you go down through the organization? Or should this be a, something that is basically uh, comes through the ranks? Yeah, that's a good question, Ali. It's really everyone. Um, and as I said, the uh, learning and becoming aware of uh, leadership attitudes or soft skills starts as an individual the very first day you go to work. So that's when you start developing your individual skills. You discover yourself, you find out who you are and what you're capable of and how you can uh, interact with others before you get out there in the second step and start interacting with others. So um, um, the, the, the sooner, and I showed one uh, actually um, example, the sooner you start uh, teaching or making people, whether they are managers or, um, um, or uh, newly hired employees, the sooner you start teaching them uh, the uh, soft skills uh, or soft competencies, the better your organization is about. In fact, 
as I mentioned as well, we are taught a lot of soft skills uh, uh, in Atam. Our mothers and fathers, uh, um, you know, told us about them. Then we come to schools, even in kindergarten, and, uh, you know, we do some of that. And we learn some of these soft competencies, but the moment we get into uh, elementary schools and then high schools and colleges, people forget about all that. And uh, when they, we, uh, you know, all we emphasize is uh, learning mathematics and uh, thermodynamics. And if you are, you know, engineers, another, you know, uh, technical, non-technical stuff. So um, it is good for colleges, particularly, to prepare their uh, graduates when, uh, and um, uh, with some uh, soft competency courses and prepare them for um, an, a team environment at a place of work. So uh, Ali, did I answer your question? Oh yes, yes, very good. I, I, I've, it, it, it clears up. You know what organizations need to do in order to be able to promote a uh, culture of leadership, as opposed to a uh, culture of just setting goals and focusing on goals, uh, just very strictly. You know. Right. Exactly. And I, I actually, I believe in addition to that, another element which is important is that to put leadership skills as part of employee performance uh, evaluation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, <laughs> since we talked about employee uh, performance evaluation, I've been on both sides of the table, uh, having been uh, um, performance reviewed, and I have done performance review for others. And in either seat, I never enjoyed the process. And I think the process is um, flawed. The reason that I think that is because it takes place once a year. And uh, so at the end of the year, you sit down in front of your uh, subordinate or employee and you uh, tell them uh, about things that may have happened, you know, 200 days ago and you and he may not even remember. And, um, you know, you tell him about things that he practiced at some point and insulted someone else or a team, uh, uh, a team member. Um, so I think the feedback and the performance review should be on a daily basis. And it should come natural. It should not be a, a, a process that is uh, so formal. It has to be, I mean, in a team that a leader manager is so close to the rest of the employees or rest of the team players, they can talk about everything and they can suggest good things to happen. Sometimes, you know, if the, the, um, the uh, performance review in, a ter in, in terms of a statement or suggestion may come from an uh, uh, employee to a manager. So uh, that's, that's uh, the, the, you know, the best environment to me and not a formal review every year. So that, to me, that's a flaw. But, you know, there might be other people who do not agree with you. Okay, so uh, I have a question from uh, Amir Mahmoud Khani. Uh, could you please give your views on uh, leading without authority? Well, you know, leaving without authority, uh, you don't have to be in a place uh, of a title, in a position, or in a chair, uh, to, so people are fearful of you. You can make people to work for you because they like you, not because they are fearful of you, or not because you're afraid to get a bad review at the end of the day, or at the end of the year, in fact. So, if you get to practice inspiration, motivation, and enable people, allow them to uh, become more powerful in, uh, in, uh, um, in, initia in their initiatives, and train them. Uh, so when you are not there, 
they can carry on the project with no need for supervision. That's the leadership without uh, uh, positional authority. The position of authority, of course, is a little bit needed as well. We are all human beings and we need a little bit of a discipline as well, incorporated. But when you are a leader manager, uh, then you're, uh, you encompass all those attributes. Uh, everything about management and leadership, uh, you know how to, you know how to do it, you know how to practice it in a way that other people uh, learn from you and, uh, and move forward. So a leadership really doesn't have to be leading in front of other people. Uh, you know, you can be uh, in the back of your team and show them the way and or observe them and, um, you know, uh, teach them from where you stand. So you don't really have to have an authority to, uh, uh, to lead. Um, Amir, did I answer your question? Okay. So uh, how do you see engagement level of different generations? Um, right now, I think um, the young professionals um, are very interested in soft competencies. Um, the older professionals, uh, when I initiated the idea of soft competencies, uh, when I was the SP president in 2010, um, a lot of people didn't like the idea. They thought, SP is, uh, you know, is a scientific organization, and uh, they, you know, uh, scientists and engineers don't need to uh, learn soft competencies. On the other hand, people like uh, Giovanni Paccoloni and uh, a lot of the young professionals uh, that he led, uh, they were they voiced the desire to see soft competencies included, and that's today's world because in the old days when I went to work, and um, I want to make an example of Ali as well, when me and Ali went to work, you know, uh, we uh, really had an office, we closed the door and worked uh, on our own project and then dispatched it to another person in the next office. But in today's world, we have people not only uh, not in offices, uh, but in cubicles, or working together in big rooms, but also from different parts of the world. And, um, and uh, they come, uh, you know, there's a diversity of gender, there's diversity of uh, um, color of skin, religion, uh, habits, uh, culture, uh, traditions, everything that we have to learn today in order to be successful. Even if we are working uh, with uh, people in our own industry, uh, everybody should learn that and everybody should uh, uh, be able to practice it. So uh, I have, I believe, another question from uh, Fred. Hi, Fred, how are you? Um, influencing without authority is what has been taught at my previous employment uh, Exxon Mobil. So, uh, <clears throat> um, you know, I, I, I don't exactly know what you mean influencing without authority. Uh, obviously, uh, to me, is uh, better or uh, much better or, you know, than, than trying to force people. So by influencing as a leader and having the confidence of your um, of your um, team members, then you can forge ahead and influence the way that your project will move forward. Um, I mean, again, and uh, I uh, agree, EQ becomes more important than IQ. Uh, EQ is really emotional quotient. Uh, IQ is intelligence quotient. And, uh, and you are right. Uh, in fact, EQ is a lot more important than IQ. But I also believe EQ training should be started earlier, even in high school. And I agree with you. And I go to elementary school, in fact, and college than corporate organization. I uh, agree with you 100%, uh, Amir, 
I think that's a great idea. It should be uninterrupted education, going from home and what your mother and father taught you to a more formal training in elementary school and so on all the way to college. Um, based on the data you presented, again, this is Amir, uh, it appears to me that we are making more managers than leaders. Is that right? Um, so far, yes, although there has been a movement in order to push soft competencies into companies and, uh, and, uh, um, and you know, let me uh, just tell you something quick. Uh, implementing soft competencies. Of course, diversity, I told you, it's one of my most favorite subjects. And, uh, you know, when diversity uh, was uh, suggested and recommended, a lot of companies came and said, okay, we need to have 52% female in our organization. So they hired any female that could uh, hire regardless of their attributes or regardless of their skills. That's not right. That's not, uh, you are not there to make, uh, to make um, a coda, uh, but you have to give uh, an equal chance to females and, and males in order to compete for the same position and, uh, and hope that eventually uh, the uh, balance will come together. Um, let me see. Um, Amir says, I don't think um, I've seen effective measures been in place to rank managers based on their leadership skills, performance in places I've worked for. What can be done about it? Well, you know, one of my slides at the very beginning uh, said that, you know, some 60% of the managers said, Listen, you know, we uh, did not get any training. Um, you know, I had a high manager that I reported to him or her, and he or she suggested that I become a manager, and they put me in, the, in that chair and said, from today on, you are a manager. And uh, that really does not make that manager a leader uh, by just uh, forcing him into that chair. So a lot of today's managers also confess that they don't have enough training. And that's, that's the, only the awareness part. The training part is the awareness part. Beyond that, you have to be able to practice things. And so uh, our managers today are failing to train themselves or uh, become aware. So forget about practicing it. So that's right. Um, and, and I think, you know, uh, managers as soon as possible and the young employees from the very first day be taught or trained in uh, leadership. Uh, so uh, uh, Hamid says, uh, could you please uh, give your views on uh, leading without authority? And I believe I answered that question uh, that um, someone else asked. You can pass those questions because you already uh, yeah. there are, uh, at the end of the chat, there are two questions, uh, one comment and one question, one co comment from the Amir and a question from the Fred. At the end? Yes, yes, sir. Okay, uh, there you go. Performance review is simply attached to management function, useless. I agree, Amir. <laughs> uh, I need uh, to talk with you more. Uh, you are my kind of person. And, um, you know, I, I never enjoyed it on either side of the table. And I don't think, uh, I think it's a flawed process and I don't think it serves anything other than ranking people to uh, lay off or, uh, or put in some, uh, or uh, give them promotion. But, you know, you have to have that feedback in a natural way. Another short story is that, um, you know, back in the early 90s, when I, uh, when a lot of consultants realize that soft skills are important, I had a boss, which I really loved. He was a good, good person. But um, throughout his training, he um, learned that he needed to establish a more uh, relation, uh, softer relation with, the, with his teammates or employees. And so he became aware of that. 
But when he came to work, he decided that every Tuesday afternoon, that's the one, that's the time <clears throat> that he wanted to spend on creating that relationship or an interaction with employees. You cannot schedule these things. You know, these ought to be natural. They have to come natural to you and to your employees. So, you know, as you go around, you have to be a leader. You cannot be le a leader Tuesday afternoon at one o'clock. So this is all uh, the um, things that one has, that comes with more practicing and getting better at practicing. And then, uh, and then uh, uh, Fred uh, said, there is no school for soft skills. Our engineers learn the technical material in the university, but no soft skills. What is your suggestion for our college students and entry level professionals, how to best acquire soft skills? Well, first of all, uh, some, uh, um, some schools have started doing this, like Notre Dame, for example. Uh, they have started including soft skills courses in their undergraduate level. So as um, electives, you know, they're uh, asked to take these kind of courses. So, so schools are starting, but, but um, that's because companies are demanding it. Companies have their own training as well. I, you know, I, I learned about all this back in late 80s and early 90s when I was a younger engineer at Shell. And so companies have these kind of uh, um, um, training as well. Um, but then um, it depends also on you if you want to go and read some books and some articles. There are plenty of these available. And companies should also hire consultants to, uh, you know, to bring the, into the place of work and work on certain teams to improve and enhance their uh, productivity. So um, I believe I answered uh, Fred's uh, question. Is there any uh, more, uh, Amit? No, no, thank you so much, uh, thank you. Once again, uh, I would like to thank Dr. Fatai for a very interesting presentation and all the audience for taking part to this event. Uh, just for your information, a recorded version of this webinar will be available in the APPIH uh, social network very soon. Thank you for taking part and have a great time. Thanks again for inviting me. Thank you all.